Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hello, Kevin Lopez back from Personal Tutors explaining you a very funny and a beautifully written play, The Dear Departed. It's a story about human relationships. It's a story about how people change with time. It's about an old 70 year old person, Abel Merriweather, who's actually a happy go lucky person doesn't care much about people around him. Yes, is concerned with his stuff and his doings. Has got two daughters, Mrs. Slater, that is Elizabeth. That's Elizabeth John Jordan and that is Emilia Slater. Emilia and Elizabeth are Two shrewd women who care about nothing rather than the belongings of their old dad, Abel. Although the two girls get married to Henry and Ben, yet it critically depicts that no man can change the words of his wife. It's a beautiful play and a hilarious one as well. So the plot goes, the first scene starts by Emilia shriekingly screaming calls Victoria, her daughter and proclaims that the grandfather, Abel, is no more. He has been dead in his bed for some time and his body seems to be cold enough. Ironically, when she finds out that her dad is no more and Victoria finds out that Abel, the grandfather, is departed. She feels a thought of a moan, yet Emilia incidentally asks her daughter to go and change into black so that when people would be coming in for mourning, they would look good. Now that seems to be prudish. That really seems to be prudish and sad enough. On the contrary, Henry, that is Amelia's husband, joins her and is informed to use the slippers of grandfather to take the bureau off and to take the watch off as well since Amelia was afraid of Elizabeth coming and grabbing the belongings of their father that were meant to be divided after his death. A bit rhetoric it seems, yet it gives the real picture of the humanity that we are dwelling into now. It gives a clear picture that once a person is dead enough, people around think more of getting his belongings rather than the departed soul. In the same way, Emilia here instructs Henry who is reluctant yet bound by the orders of a wife. Guys, if you want to change the world, do it before you're getting married, okay? <laughs> so it actually gives a picture of a husband obeying the orders given by the wife of taking the clock off the wall and keeping it in the room, taking the bureau off the room and again keeping it and exchanging it with an old drawer and giving it back or keeping it back in the grandpa's room. Although Henry is a bit reluctant and despises, yet he has to obey the order because being the lady, she is a bit orderly as a sister Elizabeth. They go ahead and ask their daughter to get 
beauty prepared, get the morning dress prepared so that they would look good and outshine the sister that is Elizabeth Jordan and her husband that is Ben Jordan. Funny. Thus, they move on and shift the things of the grandpa that is evil. and start the process of mourning rhetorically though and wait for people to come incidentally the very moment they were shifting the bureau and the clock Mrs. Jordan that is Elizabeth knocks at the door she came to know because they had given them a call amazed, alarmed Amelia asked Victoria not to open the door until they dress up properly and outshine the sister and her husband who were knocking at the door. To the contradictment of theirs, it is Amelia and his sister who always are in a tussle to outshine each other. Yet the same day, Mrs. Jordan, that is Elizabeth, incidentally outshines Mrs. Slater and informs that we have ordered the dress the moment we came to know about dad passing away. The tussle began, the slippers, the bureau, the clock and everything was discussed among them, yet nobody is approaching the departed soul laying on the bed or the body of Abel Merriweather. Rather, there was a peculiar question asked by Emilia to Elizabeth that would you like to have tea before going and paying homage to Papa? And incidentally, Elizabeth despises the idea of seeing her dad and waits for the tea to arrive. Now this play plays an important role in today's community as the relationships between people seem to be fading away rather than being enclapsed in the bond of a family. Friends, this chapter has been included in your syllabus for quite a number of reasons. The bonding of the family is shifting away as you move around. People are being abused, mishandled even after their death. To the amazement, as the fight between dividing the thing grows up, they discuss about Abel Merriweather going ahead and filling and filing out his insurance premium, making up a will, and even giving things. The moment they came to know that Abel Merriweather did not pay his insurance premium, the hell loses with Ben and he starts abusing the grandfather who seems to be dead. Incidentally, they blame him of spending the time in the ringing bells, that is a bar, a pub, ran by a widow, and not paying the insurance premium. He even abuses him by saying an old fart and a lot many cursing words that can't be repeated. Amazingly, Victoria comes running away from upstairs between the study and claims Grandpa to be getting up. Friends, remember the whole plot was planned behind or on a person who has died or passed away a couple of hours ago and at the very end they got hit at the very end they got hit 
by knowing that the person isn't dead anymore. <laughs> this play has been written by Stanley Houghton, who was a critic in the year 1880 to 1915s. He almost lived for a short time, yet he depicted clearly the societal changes that were appearing in the pre-Victorian era. He gives out a clear picture of how a family, rather than concealing the death and mourning it, defines the things as a moment and a chance to divide the stuff, the belongings. Alas, coming back to the play, my friends, as Abel Merriweather approaches the room, people are stunned. They are really stunned. We can call it a mixed emotion thing. The things going back, the things being divided, the bureau being shifted, the clock being shifted, and poor Henry wearing Abel's slippers. Abel Merriweather, being a robust and hulky guy, immediately realizes the plot and asks Henry to be a slipper thief. Henry, on the contrary, being a perfect husband, just relies upon the instincts of his wife. Funnily depicted by him stammering and Ben even going ahead and abusing the father-in-law are left cornered. Victoria in this play parts herself with the feeling and alas says that she is very happy to see the grandfather alive. Alive, the grandpa asks them about what's happening. He immediately realizes that the kids are on the verge of dividing things rather than checking him out or his health. The last scene of this play makes the grandpa realize that his daughters aren't anymore caring about him. Rather, the two girls are cynically looking away towards the belongings of the old man and having a cat fight while dividing the stuff among them. He reveals that he's going to change his will and pay his insurance premium now and last but not the least is going to marry the widow at the pub. Thus changing the whole story into a new growth. Plunging the stuff and the belongings off or, or we should be using the word stripping it off from his daughters. It's a funny play which shows the relationships, twists and turns in the common life today. I'll discuss a few questions and answers for you friends. Remember, these questions are a bit cynical and harsh and crude. I would request you to study them as well. What are the reasons for the old people being abused, harassed and abandoned in India? A topic close to my heart. Old people start feeling like children. They need to be cared. They need to be loved. They need to be inquired about their belongings since they start feeling lonely and depressed. Being stripped off of their youth, being stripped off of their independence and the health issues. Especially in India, old 
people are usually depressed and distressed due to the fact of the younger generation not wanting to understand their needs and their cravings. The members of family usually peculiarly choose their benefits initially rather than giving out the benefits or thinking about the benefits of old people around them. What does Mrs. Jordan describe as a fatal mistake and what is the irony of the comment that she makes on Mrs. Slater's defense? Elizabeth and Amelia are two crude sisters who are just looking forward to have the belongings divided among them rather than caring about the father and the fatal mistake that she claims Elizabeth had committed was not calling a doctor to check the body or the sleeping beauty of Abel Merriweather. This actually brings the whole confusion ahead. Ben appreciates grandfather saying it's a good thing he did, later calls him a drunken old beggar. Why does he change his opinion about the grandfather? When Ben came to know that he went, that the grandfather, that is Abel Merriweather, went ahead and paid the insurance premium, he thought that the, now the insurance premium and the insurance amount could be shared among the two families. Later on, when he came to know that the old hag did not pay the insurance premium, he started abusing him with all sort of words and languages, saying him to be an old beggar, not thinking about the family, not giving about the money or the insurance as well. Since the insurance premium is not paid, so there would be no insurance amount received by the two girls. Why does Mrs. Slater decide to shift the bureau from grandfather's room before the arrival of Jordan's? How does Henry react to the suggestion? Mrs. Slater has always been a greedy old woman. She has always looked ahead and grabbed any chance of taking the belongings of her dad and using it for her own sake. Yet she goes and plans this thing before the Jordans arrive because she knows that, that a sister that would go to any extent, any depth just to get the things that she liked. And in return of a single piece of wood, she would ask for many other things that would make Mrs. Slater a bit reluctant to share. Henry was actually shocked at the suggestion but as I said in the play, thou getting married to a woman cannot change the world anymore. <laughs> what changes that grandfather make in his new will and what effect does it have on his daughters? Grandfather decided that in his new will he would leave his money and things to the person he would be living with when he died. He did not give anything to the daughters. He just claimed out that he would be sharing and leaving the money and belongings with the person whom he would be living and dying with. Incidentally, the person being the next lady he is going to marry. This actually strips off the daughters with, the, with any fortune, any virtue that they could have wanted and kept with them. What are the three things that grandfather plans to do on Monday next? The three things that the grandfather planned to do on the next Monday was first go to a lawyer and change his will Secondly, going ahead and paying its insurance premium to ensure the entity and the sanctity of the person who he would be living with. And the final thing, he decides to get married at, the Phil at St. Philip's Church. How does Mrs. Slater plan to outshine the Jordans? What does it reveal about her character? Mrs. Slater, not a very kind and innocent lady decides to wear a beautiful black dress as a morning to outshine her sister. This incidentally shows that she does not care about the death or any relationship. Rather, she's just a prudish woman, a chemically plastic woman who is needing for the appearances 
the way she performs, the way she looks in front of the world, rather than the actual death scenario going on. What is the reason for the Jordans taking long time to get to the house of Slaters? What does it show about the two sisters' attitude towards each other? The Jordans, on the contrary, were busy getting a morning dress for themselves. They bought it, they ordered it, and thus were waiting for the dress to arrive and to wear and give out an appearance in front of the sister. It actually shows that these two sisters were just two cats fighting around outshining each other rather than having a bond of family and thinking about their poor old father who incidentally himself was a person who knew that he would not be in a kind or a bad end. How does this spat between his daughters lead to grandfathers discovering the truth? The spat about the things being divided, the spat about the things being shifted, the slipper thief thing, Henry being caught and the bureau and the clock being discussed among the sisters led the grandfather to know how prudish and cruel the two sisters were and what they were actually seeking for rather than caring about the father and calling up a doctor if they inquired about his death and his ill health. After discovering the truth, grandfather became very bitter because he was abashed, he was ashamed of his daughters performing such rituals on the news of his demise. Sad, ironic. The irony in this play, Dear Departed, is about a father truly dear to his daughters. Yet, the moment they came to know that he isn't paid his insurance premiums and planning to get remarried brings out a cat fight among the two sisters who are hindered by the thought of the money being snatched away, the belongings being lost and getting nothing in lieu of the care or anything that they did for the father. They were happy with the thought that they immediately assumed that the grandfather was dead and they were looking for the money being taken away yet the bitter truth comes out in a bad way Victoria Slater is truly attached to her grandpa as she sees the elders in her family quarrel over the inheritance she is bewildered and upset by their attitude. As Victoria writes her diary entry outlining the incident and your feelings. Friends, I would request you to think about this answer in your words. Yet I would offer you a few notions of help. Victoria being a young girl had seen her grandfather. Usually grandchildren are close to the grandparents. On the day Victoria came to know about the death of her grandfather, she becomes a bit weary and sad. She starts disliking the thoughts of her mother, using the words pinching for stealing. I hope grandfather was here and many other things. She responded to her feelings by feeling sad. Pretty old innocent angel. So friends, this is a chapter that shows the reality that's taking place in the society today. At many places, yes. The dear departed. We have been giving the reviews and the questionnaires for your support and betterment for a good time now. If you have got any suggestions or questions, please do write in the comment below. For to know something about personal tutorials and us, you can just press the button about us. You can subscribe us for updates. You can contact us personally via call. We will be replying to you. If you want the data online, we can provide it online to you or in a pen drive on request. So please go ahead and comment friends for any other questions. So signing off today, 
This is Kevin Lopez again. If you have any questions, do contact us. Thank you very much.